Hi folks, welcome to the channel. If you're new or returning subscriber, please remember to like our videos, provide comments to help us with continuous improvement to our content, share with friends and family, and most importantly, subscribe. Thank you. Alright folks, so let's have a look at this problem. So the question states that a reinforced concrete column is rectangular in section and measures 0.4 meters by 0.6 meters. The column contains 40 steel rods 10 millimeters in diameter. So we're being tasked to calculate the maximum load which can be carried or supported by the column given that the stress in the steel must not exceed 400 uh, megapascals. We'll be giving some further information to support us in solving this problem. So we have to assume that E for steel measures at 200 GPA, so that's gigapascals, and, and the Young models for concrete measures at 12 GPA. And we are expecting an answer of approximately 6.94 meganewtons. So here are the diagrams representing the problem that we're trying to solve. So on the right, we have a diagram showing the reinforcements of steel in the concrete column. And on the left is more of a modeling diagram where we have the load limit or the weight limit, which we're trying to predict and how that's in equilibrium with the reaction from the reinforcements and the concrete. So let's have a go working through this problem. So let's work through this problem. So this is a quick diagram representation of the problem we're trying to solve. So we've got our concrete composite and the concrete composite is made out of the concrete, which is the base material and the steel rods, which is more or less the reinforcing material to give the structure that needs the strength, additional strength that it needs. So being told to calculate what the load bearing capacity of the column would be. So that load capacity is characterized or represented by WL, okay? So again, it's up to you in terms of what you want to notate um, the problem. Um, this is just basically a slab to which this UDL is distributing the load. So one thing we're going to assume is that for the purposes of equilibrium, there are going to be reactions countering WL from the concrete slab. So let's get a red pen to characterize that. So we've got some mineral force there. So let's call that FC. So that'll be the reaction from the concrete and the steel reinforcements. We're just going to call that F of S. For simplicity, I can call it F subscript SR. Okay. So if we're applying the equations of equilibrium, then the sum of all the forces should equate to zero. So since WL is going down, I'm just going to denote that with a negative. So W minus WL plus FC plus FS, or that should sum up to zero. Thus, WL will be equal to the sum of FC plus F of S. So let's call that equation one. All right. Now we also got to assume that when WL is exerted on the column that the extension will be equal in the reinforcing materials or the composite materials. Okay. So if we assume it, so 
that the extension in the composite will be equal to the change in length in the reinforcements, which will be equal to the change in length of the concrete, then this implies that the strain in the steel reinforcements will be equal to the strain in the concrete. So this implies that epsilon s is equal to epsilon c. So we're going to use this relationship to come up with another compatibility equation. So we know from first principles, all right, that the strain is equal to the stress divided by the Young's modulus. Okay, so let's just move that. Just call this what so I can keep track on each sheet. So let me just put it to there. So epsilon is equal to sigma divided by E. So we're going to relate it to the expression that we just came up with. Then this means that sigma divided by E with respect to the steel reinforcement would be equal to sigma over E with respect to the concrete. So let's call this equation two. Okay, so we've got two equations that we can use. Now, we also talked about forces. So we know that stress, sigma, for first principle is equal to the applied force divided by the cross-sectional area. So let's call this 3A. So if we're going to define this equation with respect to the applied force, then the force is equal to the product of the stress and the cross-sectional area. So let's call that 3B. So if we substitute 3B into equation 1 and have this equation modified, then the weight limit WL will be equal to into bracket sigma A with respect to the concrete plus sigma A with respect to the steel reinforcement. Okay, so let's call that, uh, let's call that equation four. All right, so we've come up with some form of expression for that. So what we can do now here is this. From the problem we've been given that the stress limit for the steel reinforcements. So this is sigma S should be equal or less than 400 MPa. So we've been given that information. So we've also been given some information relating to the Young's models, but we'll come back to that later. So since we know what sigma s is, we can then redefine from equation two what sigma c should be, okay? And we can then substitute that information into equation four to work out what the load limit is. So since Sigma over E with respect to the steel reinforcements is equal to the ratio of sigma and E with respect to the concrete by making sigma C, okay, the subject. We can then transpose the equation. So sigma C would be equal to 
sigma s times into bracket ec divided by es. Okay, so let's call this uh, let's call this six. So we've now defined or established an equation for sigma c. So here is more or less up to you. You can then you can decide to use this information to work out what sigma c is, or we can substitute what sigma c is into equation five. So that's what I'm going to do. So if I substitute equation five, uh, equation six into five then this is what we'll have. So we'll have WL is equal to sigma S EC over ES AC plus sigma S times AS. So we've got two common terms, which is sigma s. So if we factorize sigma s out of this expression, then the lower limit will be equal to sigma s ec over es az plus as. So we've now defined the equation to work out what the low limit will be on the column. So let's work out some of the variables that we need. So we can start off by working out what AS is. So AS is representing the total area of the steel reinforcements in the composite. Okay, so let's call that in CC. So CC is just basically the concrete composite. So AS would be equal to N times into bracket pi over four times D squared. Okay, where N is equal to the number of steel rods. So the question gave this as 40. And D, the diameter of the steel rod is given as 10 millimeters. So therefore, S is equal to 40 times pi over 4 times 10 squared. So pi over 4 times 10 squared times 40. And that gives 3141.59. Let's call it 93. Let's call it 93 millimeters squared. So we've worked out the sectional area in terms of the collection of steel reinforcements. So AC, so if we let AC represent the area of the concrete, okay, and AC will be equal to ACC minus AS. So what is A? AC, so ACC is the area of the concrete composite. So we need to be very careful here, okay? Because the steel reinforcement is occupying the void that will normally be occupied by the concrete, assuming that the pillar was 100% made out of concrete or fabricated out of concrete, but this is not the case. So we do need to ensure that if we are going to do these calculations, we need to take away okay, the occupancy of the steel reinforcements to know what the true area is for 
the concrete itself. So we need to be very careful about that. Okay, so A, C, C, that is just simply length times width or length times breadth. So we've been given that to be 400 and 600. Okay, so I've converted it from uh, meters into millimeters. So as I say, it is up to you. You just need to be very confident on how you need to go about working this out. And this will be equal to 24 times 10 to the power of 4 millimeters squared. Okay. So now that we've worked that out, we can then calculate for AC. So AC will be equal to 24 times 10 to the power of 4 minus 3141.592. So if we bring our handy calculator, we have 24 times 10 to the power of 4 minus 3141.593. And this would give, uh, so let's do this, uh, 23.6858 times 10 to the power of 4 millimeters squared. Okay. So now that we calculate the area, WL, the load limit, could be equal to 400. So since I'm working in the basis of, so this is where I need to um, clarify. All right. So the stress in this deal is given as 400 MPA. All right. Since I'm working in the basis of millimeters, I need to convert that into its millimeter equivalent. So this is the same as 400 Newton per millimeter squared. Okay. So since I'm working the basis of millimeters, I don't need really to represent the mega hat. Okay, so I'm just going to redefine that as that. If I was working the base of meters, then I do need to convert that to 400 times 10 to the power of 6. All right, so I'm just going to write 400. All right. So the weight limit would be equal to 400 times E. So EC divided by ES, so that would be 12 GPA times 200 GPA, but the GPAs will cancel out, so that simplifies it to 12 over 200 times the area, so we calculate the area to be 23.6858 times 10 to the power of 4 bracket close plus the area of the steel reinforcement which was 3141.593 okay and that would be in newtons so this would be equal to 400 times so let's bring our handy calculator let's do let's compute uh, the first bracket so that would be 12 over 200 times 23.6858 times 10 to the power of 4 and that would give 1411.48 so that would be plus 31.5193 Newtons, so let me just bring them in the bracket here so that it eliminates any confusion. So that plus 31, 41.593 will give 17,353.073. Multiply that by 400, and that gives 69. Four one two two nine point two newtons. So how many zeros do we have? So that is six million nine hundred and forty one thousand two hundred and twenty two point uh, twenty two hundred and twenty nine point two newtons. So we can change that to be about six point 
nine four uh, mega newtons. And there we have it. Bye, bye, bye.